Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to the live cast of this Mass for Tuesday of week 17 in Ordinary Time, the 28th of July, 2020. Our entrance antiphon. God is in his holy place. God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hoped in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord said to me, Say this word to the people. Tears flood my eyes night and day unceasingly, since a crushing blow falls on the daughter of my people, a most grievous in injury. If I go into the countryside, there lie men killed by the sword. If I go into the city, I see people sick with hunger. Even prophets and priests plow the land. They are at their wit's end. Have you rejected Judah altogether? Does your very soul revolt at Zion? Why have you struck us down without hope of cure? We are hoping for peace. No good came of it. For the moment of cure, nothing but terror. Lord, we do confess our wickedness and our father's guilt, and we have indeed sinned against you. For your name's sake, do not reject us. Do not dishonor the throne of your glory. Remember us. Do not break your covenant with us. Can any of the pagan nothings make it rain? Can the heavens produce showers? No, it is you, Lord. O our God, you are our hope, since it is you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Rescue us, Lord, for the glory of your name. Do not hold the guilt of our fathers against us. Let your compassion hasten to meet us, for we are in the depths of distress. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, our Saviour, Come to our help. Come for the sake of the glory of your name. 
O Lord our God, forgive us our sins, rescue us for the sake of your name. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you. Let your strong arm reprieve those condemned to die. But we, your people, the flock of your pasture, will give you thanks forever and ever. We will tell your praise from age to age. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. What is this word? It is the good news that has been brought to you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Leaving the crowds, Jesus went to the house, and his disciple came to him and said, Explain the parable about the Daniel in the field to us. He said in reply, The sow of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the subjects of the kingdom. The Daniel, the subjects of the evil one, the enemy who sowed them, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. Well then, just as the Daniel is gathered up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of time. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that provoke offenses, and all who do evil. Throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Then the virtues will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Listen to anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I wonder how many Catholics know the doctrine of the last four things as taught by the church. What are these last four things? Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. These are the last four things that the church has reminded us so that we can keep our focus in view. Once we forget these last four things, then we will live our life recklessly and our life will be futile. But if we are aware that at the end of this life, we will have to die, death is inevitable. No matter how great you are, we will have to meet death. What happens after death? That is an important question which the world cannot answer. After death, we are told there will be judgment. And after judgment, it's either heaven or hell. If the church has taught us about purgatory, don't think purgatory is midway between heaven and hell. Purgatory is at the threshold of heaven, very far from hell. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, how did these doctrines of the last four things have been forgotten by the world? When these last four things were so clear in my generation, not so long ago, in the 1960s, people were still very, very clear about the last four things. But within the last 50 years, these last four things have been forgotten. Today, we have this modern trend. The YOLOs are promoting that there is no life after death. There is no judgment. 
There is no heaven. There is no hell. There is only this life. That's why they call themselves the YOLO. You only live once. And since you live only once, and there is this life on this earth, then you must make full use of it. You must try to live to the fullest. Or to the fullest for these people means you must enjoy yourself. You must have all the kinds of adventures that are offered in this world. You must taste all the pleasures of life. There is nothing that is right or wrong. Because there is no judgment. There is no good. There is no evil. We just have to live our life as we think it should be lived. But we must enjoy. Grab as much as we can. Don't waste your time sacrificing for the future of humanity. Let the future be handed by them. If you sacrifice now, then you will miss out. Uh, that is why the corollary to the YOLOs is FOMO, fear of missing out. If you start sacrificing your life for others, then you can never fully live. You will miss all the pleasures of life, all the traveling that you could have done. Instead, you are spending your time looking after your elderly. You are destroying your life. You should leave these fellows alone. Enjoy yourself. Go for holidays. Spend all the money on yourself. Because you have only one life to live. This is the outcome, my dear brothers and sisters. The YOLOs is the outcome, as I've said many times. And by now, you all should remember, it's secularism. That breeds relativism, materialism, individualism. Because they tell us there is no God. You don't have a spirit, you are just a creature. You are just like a dog. When you die, you are finished. So why do you worry about being judged at the end of time? About going to hell, going to heaven? There is no such things, they say. There is no God. Just do whatever you want, just don't get caught. The laws that are promulgated, they are not neither true or wrong. It's just the common witch of the people. That's why relativism, different countries have different laws. There are different levels of ethics in different countries. Nobody is saying that it's a truth. Nobody is saying that, oh, this is the right thing to do. No, this is what we all agree. It's not because it's true. If the people agree, then it's okay. If the people don't agree, then of course you cannot do it. And if you get caught, of course you'll be punished. But you don't worry about punishment, you know. Because if you get caught and you are sent to prison, if you cannot take it, if life is too depressed, if you just kill yourself, after all, you have only one life. Why do you want to prolong your suffering? That is why the world promotes euthanasia and even suicide as well. Because there is no point if you find that is, you don't have, you cannot enjoy your life, there's no point living. Because once you are dead, all sufferings will cease. They say. No more suffering. Precisely, this is what is the greatest trick of the evil one. To tell us that when we die, we just disappear from this world. My dear brothers and sisters, our soul will live on. That is why when someone dies, we say, he passed on. <laughs> what does it mean? Life continues even after death. Our soul, which is our mind, can never die. It's spirit. Unless you don't believe that you are made of spirit, because the world says we are just made of matter. That is not true. We all know ourselves. Nobody wants to die. That's why even those who don't believe in God after death, they will still remember their loved ones. They will still think, keep thinking of them. 
hoping one day can be reunited. So don't fool ourselves. That is why in today's gospel, the parable of Daniel, Jesus made it clear, there will be judgment. Some will be sent to heaven, and those wicked ones will be sent to hell. We will be punished for the evil that we have done. And that is what the Lord said, there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Not only is judgment a reality, the devil is also a reality. Jesus in the parable of Daniel speaks about the enemy, the evil one, who is sowing all the seeds of falsehood in the world today, deceiving so many people into thinking that there is no devil, they say. There is no evil spirit. There is no e e not even good spirit. No spirit at all. This is all mythological understanding. There is no such thing as evil. Just enjoy whatever you are doing. That is why today if you talk about the devil, people think, oh, this fellow is uneducated, uncivilized. He is still living in the primitive world. Intelligent people, those who are PhD, won't believe in all these evil spirits. We only believe in science, technology. No evil spirits. And Jesus makes it clear, the evil one is real, deceiving us, telling us, you must have more power, more possessions, Enjoy everything, even things that are immoral. Because there is no immorality. My dear brothers and sisters, the parable of Daniel reminds us that certainly there will be these struggles between good and evil. And all of us, we are in that struggle. Good and evil. In every one of us, there is a lot of goodness. But in every one of us, we are also tempted by evil. Even St. Paul in Romans chapter 7 speaks about this conflict in him. And so every day we are fighting against the evil one. And every day the evil one is tempting us and blinding us. And so it's a question of who will win. But this struggle will continue. But the beautiful thing about today's scripture reading tells us that God is patient. He allows his struggle to continue. He does not judge us yet until the end. Until that time, God continued to give us grace after grace. And that was what happened in today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. He was lamenting. Because God told the people, you must repent. They didn't. And so, Prophet Jeremiah, he saw with his own eyes the destruction of Judah. Men killed by the sword. They were hungry. Even the prophet and priest, instead of doing the work, they have to plow the land. Try to feed themselves, in other words. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the punishment that they receive was meant not as a revenge, but for them to be aware of their sinfulness, to repent. So sometimes when we have punishment in life or we face consequences because of our sins, that is actually the grace of God. He's just giving us warning before it's too late. But if we continue to be blind to the signs that God has given to us, surely we will meet eternal judgment. That one, no escape. No escape. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us strengthen ourselves. Let us not be deceived by the world. If you want to live your life fully, live in view of the outcome. What is the outcome? Heaven or hell? You choose. If you want to live in heaven, 
you start living a heavenly life here and now. But if you want to live in hell, then you continue with this sinful way of life. The choice is yours. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the bread we offer you. Root of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts and through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exhortation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other one sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving yourself, your body and blood, at every Eucharist that we celebrate, and especially when we receive you sacramentally, since I cannot receive you now, I pray that you will come to me spiritually. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your presence so that I will not be fearful of death. 
but already celebrating the joy of participating in this heavenly banquet with you. One day, I will enter into heaven, into your kingdom, where the banquet will never end. So much joy and love and life. Lord Jesus, help me to remember the ultimate destiny of my life, which is to share in your heavenly banquet with your Father and the Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memory of the passion of your Son. Run, we pray that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for praying with us, dear sisters and brothers, for praying with us today. We hope you can join us again tomorrow at noon. Have a blessed day.